In this video, we finish our work with the integrated rate laws by deriving the integrated rate law for a second order reaction with two reagents. Okay, uh, so this will be a second order reaction, but you now are going to have two reagents. It will be reacting to give some products. All right, so when we write the rate law for this particular reaction, it's going to be second order overall, and that means that you are going to have the following. That will be the rate law in which you have uh, this rate law. This uh, rate is first order with respect to A, second order, uh, first order with respect to B, and then second order overall. At the same time, we know that the definition of the rate would be this. We could do it also with the other reagent B, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, the integration of the rate law is just going to require for us to equate those two and then solve. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. Minus differential of the concentration of A uh, over time as a function of time is equal to K concentration of A times concentration of B. All right, so much as we have done in the last few videos, we will uh, uh, aggregate terms so that concentrations are on the left-hand side and then time is on the right-hand side. So we can turn this into the following. Uh, concentration of A, concentration of B, and then K differential of T. And we can uh, switch signs for convenience. This term is very familiar. It's exactly identical in all of the uh, integrated rate laws that we have worked with. And then we have to reckon with this one. A problem with this term is that now you actually have that there's two uh, independent variables here, and both of them change with time. So that actually complicate, uh, complicates quite a bit the integration. However, uh, we can take care of this issue by noticing the following. Uh, if we start a reaction with a concentration A sub naught and a concentration B sub naught, after some time has elapsed, what we'll have is that the concentrations will be uh, A and B, which is what we have uh, right here uh, in this expression. But we can say that if the stoichiometric coefficients are 1 and 1, then the same amount of A and B have reacted uh, uh, in that particular time. So we can say that this A is the same thing as uh, what I had initially mi minus the amount that has reacted X. And then I also have that uh, my concentration of B is going to be at what, we had, what I had initially minus whatever has reacted. And again, the key is that this X, the amounts that have reacted are identical if the stoichiometric coefficients are 1 and 1. Okay? So uh, then we can actually uh, take this and, and replace these concentrations by A naught minus X or B naught minus X. Right, so we can uh, say that uh, this uh, differential expression is going to be equal to the differential of the concentration of A naught minus X okay, over uh, A naught minus X times the concentration of B naught minus X concentration made of minus x, and this is equal to minus k differential of t. It turns out that now you only have one variable to integrate, which is this x, and this is not so difficult to integrate. We're actually not going to see the explicit integration, we're just going to look at the solution and then see what we can learn from it. Okay, so uh, a solution of that uh, differential expression turns into the following. And we're doing this assuming that the concentration of b naught is a little larger than the concentration of a naught. The answer to this, uh, the integrated rate law is going to be equal to the concentration, one of the concentration of B at time zero, minus the, concentra uh, minus the concentration of A at time zero, natural log of the concentration of B times the concentration of A at time zero, over the concentration of A, over the concentration of B times zero, and this is equal to K sub T. Okay, so um, much as we have done before, uh, we could try to solve this for A and for B and see uh, how these uh, concentrations change in time. And uh, we're not going to do that explicitly, but something that would happen is that uh, A would change as a function of time in this fashion, okay? And B, which has to be a little bit larger than A to start with, uh, would also change in the same fashion, but of course it will be a little bit offset because the concentration has to be a little larger initially. Okay, so uh, this is kind of a summary of uh, the second order reactions with two reagents, which are uh, pretty commonplace. 
can notice that we actually have not taken uh, a, a very detailed look at the actual uh, integration because that's not important for us. Uh, I think what is important here is to notice uh, the strategy to solve this and then uh, the solution, uh, we can just look at it and get it from the book.